generosity and happiness and love in volunteers, the recipients, and the tears of joy, and some of the recipients have returned to church because of this effort. There are numerous Bible passages that remind us to feed his sheep, that whatever we do to the least of our brothers and sisters, we do unto him. These baskets are more than just a meal for the day. They provide hope, compassion, and that someone cares. They see the love of Jesus in our actions. If you look at our Lord on the cross, he said yes to you and I. Do you hear his calling? Will you heed his call to feed his sheep, to be his hands and feet? If not you, then who will? How can you help? We need $45,000 to reach our $73,000 goal. A $40 donation will sponsor a family. We need hundreds of volunteers on this coming Saturday and Sunday to assemble and deliver the baskets. We need especially drivers. We also need your prayers. Please look at the bulletin or go to the main page on the St. Anne's website to volunteer, to donate, and obtain additional information. On behalf of the men's club and the thousands of the people that we fed, thank you in advance for answering his call. May God continue to bless you, your families, and our wonderful St. Anne's community. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. Let's take just a moment to quiet our hearts before we begin. And as the community we are, let us now rise and greet our neighbors. Good morning. So great to worship together this morning. Let us join our voices in song for our opening hymn.
In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord our God, the constant gladness of being devoted to you, for it is full and lasting happiness to serve with constancy the author of all that is good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Lo, the day is coming, blazing like an oven, when all the proud and all evildoers will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, leaving them neither root nor branch, says the Lord of hosts. But for you who fear my name, there will arise the sun of justice with its healing rays. The word of the Lord.
justice, with justice, the Lord comes to rule the earth with justice, with justice. reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked, so as not to burden any of you. Not that we do not have the right, Rather, we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were with you, we instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way by not keeping busy but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct and urge in the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. The word of the Lord.
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. While some people were speaking about how the temple was adorned with costly stones and votive offerings, Jesus said, all you see here, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. Then they asked him, teacher, when will this happen? And what sign will there be when all these things are about to happen? He answered, see that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name saying, I am he, and the time has come. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for such things must happen first, but it will not be the immediately be the end. Then he said to them, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines and plagues from place to place and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. Before all this happens, however, they will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons, and they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead you to giving testimony. Remember you are not to prepare your defense beforehand, for I myself shall give you a wisdom in speaking that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will be, even be handed over by your parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. If we're not careful, the relentless stream of bad news can damage our capacity to hear, believe, and even spread the good news. And that just makes us even feel worse. As such, many are seeking a lifeline, a way to make sense of it all. Jesus provides that lifeline and the clarity in today's gospel. Before the church was even born, Jesus wanted his disciples to know what they were in for. In today's gospel, he gave it to them straight. You will be hated by all because of my name. Hated by all. If they were faithful to him, none of them would be winning popularity contests. Rather, he described a future of persecutions, betrayals, trials, imprisonment, and even death for their fidelity. If they were to follow Jesus, it would be to pick up their crosses every day and follow him all the way, he who is the way, all the way to the bloody cross. By doing so, they would become like their master in his self-giving love. Jesus tells us within today's gospel why he would permit his disciples to suffer and how they would eventually triumph as he would. Jesus told them, this will give you the opportunity to testify. And the greatest testimony of all is fidelity in the face of suffering and death. It is said that the blood of the martyrs is the seed of Christians. Their blood would fertilize the soil so that the seed of the gospel would sprout abundantly. Their union to Christ's suffering and death was the same methodology Jesus used for his only begotten son to provide his greatest witness. So what is the purpose of all this suffering? What good does the Lord want to bring out of it? Jesus answers these questions in the same way he spoke to his disciples 2,000 years ago. This will give you the opportunity to testify, to be a disciple. Just like the early martyrs, persistence and fidelity was what brought many believers to the faith. So our persistence and fidelity to Christ in the face of challenges and hardships can show others that Jesus is worth the fight, worth suffering for. Archbishop Fulton Sheen used to say that he loved a time of difficulty because it was that time real Christians had a, t a chance to shine. It is easy to float downstream, he would preach, 
After all, even dead bodies can float downstream. But it takes a real man, a real woman, to swim upstream, to swim against the current. When we swim upstream and against the current, others will notice. They will start to ask themselves why and for whom are we willing to go through such an effort? The cynics often say, well, it's easy to love Jesus when everything's going right, when things are going your way. But when they see us remain faithful in hardship, even they will start to wonder why, and we will have the chance to give them the reason. The reason Jesus gives us in our gospel today. He tells us that practically speaking, everyone will betray us. Our family, our friends, our government, all except one. One will never betray us, and this is why we can remain faithful to him. When, like Jesus experienced, everyone else seems to abandon us. The one who will never betray us is God himself. He will be there with us no matter what, giving us the words and the wisdom, courage and grace to remain as faithful to him to the end, just as he was and is faithful to us to the end. When we base our lives on fidelity to him, we can weather any storm in confidence. We will persevere. Jesus finishes his instruction with the words of great hope, which really are, in my opinion, the best and most important part of the whole gospel message today. By your perseverance, you will save your lives. He calls us to stay with it, to fight the good fight, to finish the race, and to keep the faith. He recognizes that with great temptation that faces us whenever we're suffering or doing something challenging is to just simply give up. Jesus tells us in the today gospel the same message that Winston Churchill gave his countrymen during a speech in the height of World War II when so many were wondering if the fight against tyranny was worth it. He got up to the microphone and gave what many has said was his greatest speech of his whole life. Only 18 words in all. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. Never give up, never give up, never give up. That's the message Jesus gives us at the end of the gospel. By your perseverance, you will save lives. When we feel like throwing in the towel, Jesus tells us to use it to wash and wipe the feet of those who are beating us down. In doing this, Jesus isn't just merely saying, do what I say. He's saying, come, follow me. Despite all the suffering, he kept getting up, heading toward the finish line, giving witness to the love that made even much suffering bearable. By his perseverance, he opens the gates of heaven. By our perseverance, we have the opportunity to walk through those gates. And we will never know, we will never have any idea how many we helped find their way along the way as well. It reminds me of a story of patience, persistence, and perseverance. Once there was a kindergarten teacher, we might say a kinder garden teacher, here in Capel, Texas, who was helping one of her students put on his cowboy boots. He asked for her help, and she could see why. Even with her pulling and him pushing, the little boots still wouldn't go on. Lord help us, she says. By the time they got the second boot on, she had worked up a mighty sweat. She almost cried when the little boy said, teacher, they're on the wrong feet. <laughs> she looked and sure enough they were. And it wasn't any easier pulling the boots off than it was putting them on. She managed to keep her cool though, as together they worked to get the boots back on, this time on the right feet. Being a good St. Anne parishioner and trying to help this little one along to becoming a saint, all the while she was praying to God for the intercessions of the saints for patience and persistence during this trial. Then he announced, well, these aren't even my boots. <laughs> She bit her tongue rather than get right in his face screaming, why didn't you say so? Once again, she struggled to help him pull the ill-fitting boots right off his little feet. No sooner had they gotten the boots off when he said, 
They're my brother's boots. My mama made me wear them today. <laughs> At this point, the only thing that could come to her mind was, Jesus, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> now she didn't know if she should laugh or cry, but she mustered up what grace and courage she had left to wrestle those boots back on his little feet again. Oh, thanks be to God. Helping him into his coat, she asked, now where are your mittens? He said, I didn't want to lose them, so I stuffed them in the toes of my boots. <laughs> Again, by our patience, charity, and perseverance, we will have no idea those we helped, big or small, find their way into sainthood as well. We, get, we began this month invoking the memory and intercession of all those who through their faithful perseverance has saved their lives. Father Edwin recommended that we, if we hadn't already, that we should assign a personal saint, one that resonates with our life. Mine has always been Saint Joseph. I have to believe that he lived a great life of patience and perseverance as a plan for his life totally changed. He was set to marry the girl of his dreams and live out the life as he had planned, as they had planned. Then everything turned upside down. He thought his plan was shattered. And finally, he trusted in the message that God gave him and persistently followed God's ever-changing plan for him, including some late night road trips. Indeed, the saints have shown us that perseverance is possible and that the eternal reward is sure. They now inspire us along our journey to keep our hearts lifted towards God and to never, ever, never, ever, ever give up. We take on the words of the letter to the Hebrews. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus as the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. Consider him who had endured such hostility against him from sinners so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. There's nothing to be afraid of. The same Jesus who helped the saints helps us. Lord, grant us perseverance with hope and courage through the help of your holy saints. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, one of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father. We came all things well made. For us made for our salvation, He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, the Son of the of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake, He was crucified and He was fired. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. This kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Lord, the giver of life, 
who pursues from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of all sins, and I look forward to the destruction of the dead. In the life of the world to come. Amen. Knowing that his words lead to eternal life, we turn to our Father in prayer. For the church, that we may grow strong in our faith and trust in God to lead us through hardships and sufferings, we pray to the Lord. For leaders of all nations, that they may work together to see that peace and justice reign throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. For all those affected by natural disasters and environmental tra tragedies, that they may be assisted in rebuilding their lives and restoring what they have lost, we pray to the Lord. Amen. That prayer, hard work, and generous service will prepare many young men and women to answer the Lord's call to follow Him as priests, deacons, and in the consecrated life, we pray to the Lord. Amen. For moms who are on the Moms Ministry Retreat this weekend, May they experience restoration, healing, and God's abundant peace. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For the sick and all those who care for them, may God's grace bring them healing and strength, especially those whose names are in the bulletin on the prayer chain, and also for John Bobbitt, Louise Brinkle, Laverne Bialis. We pray to the Lord. Amen. For the faithful departed, especially for Juana Acosta, Haraline Juarez, Federico Mendoza, Jutamian Flores, Noble Hartman, and Juan Monterreal. May they experience fullness of joy with the saints in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we entrust our prayers to you in the holy name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray brother and that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to god the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise of your holy name our good and good all souls church grant o lord we pray that what we offer in the sight of your majesty may obtain for us the grace of being devoted to you and gain us the price of everlasting happiness through christ our lord the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience and so lord with all the angels and saints we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim You are indeed holy O Lord the founder of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you in a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith for 
cross we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope edward and gregory our bishops and all the clergy or remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with the blessed joseph her spouse with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. at the savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation Deliver us Lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our savior Jesus Christ Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles peace i leave you my peace i give you Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever Amen. the peace of the lord be with you always Amen. let us offer each other the sign of christ's peace peace with you
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
You're my hope of glory Let us pray. We have partaken of the gifts of this sacred mystery, humbly imploring, O Lord, that what your Son commanded us to do in memory of him may bring us growth in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. Have your seat, please. We have a few announcements. Hello everyone, my name is Rebecca Almanza. Um, if you go to the 430 Mass, you usually see me singing with Curtis. I'm also new to the staff here, the Director of Development, and I just have an announcement on behalf of Father Edwin. Thank you to everyone for their financial pledge for the 2023 stewardship year. We're so immensely grateful for your charitable heart and action. For parishioners still praying about your 2023 pledge, we invite you to make a financial pledge using the pledge card shared last week or by going online to our parish website under the Give section. Your generous gifts of time, money, and dedication to this church ensure that we can successfully fulfill God's calling of us. If you are still praying about your commitment or you did not receive a pledge card last week, pledge cards are available at the Welcome Center. In the bulletin, there's a uh, QR code, and cards were also mailed to registered parishioner homes. If you already made your pledge and have an extra card at home, feel free to bring that back and recycle it at the Welcome Center. You will notice there are also little envelopes at the Welcome Center so the kiddos can participate with the family throughout the year. For online giving, again, the scan the QR code and sign up for recurring giving throughout the year with your committed 2023 pledge. Or you can do a single sum gift as a one-time gift. For those wondering, what is a pledge? A pledge is a commitment to make a specific financial gift over a period of time. If you're like me, you may want to spread it out over the year by a weekly or monthly gift. 
You may return the pledge cards in the mail or at the masses. Any questions, contact our parish office or ask for myself at extension 1201. Thank you for your generosity and for your support. God bless you. Please stand. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. God. You shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see shall not drive.